the law of one unabridged transcription of contact between the L and L group in registered trademark and the social memory complex known as RAW. Session 31 I am RAW. I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Questioner, I would like to ask a question first for the instrument herself. She request, S to know if it would be advisable for her to walk alone now that she feels better. I am raw. This is acceptable. Questioner, okay. What I'm going to do is use the information that we did at the end of the previous book that you suggested would be more appropriate for more advanced material. We will put it in the book at this point, as we are talking about bisexual reproduction, and I would like to expand on this material a little bit to get some definitions and better understandings. You speak in this material of sexual energy transfer. Could you define that energy transfer and expand upon its meaning, please? I am raw. Energy transfer implies the release of potential energies across, shall we say, a potentiated space. The sexual energy transfers occur due to the polarizations of two mind-body-spirit complexes, each of which have some potential difference one to the other. The nature of the transfer of energy or of the blockage of this energy is then a function of the interaction of these two potentials. In the cases where transfer takes place, you may liken this to a circuit being closed. You may also see this activity, as all experiential activities, as the creator experiencing itself. Questioner, would this then be the primal mechanism for the creator to experience self? I am raw. This is not a proper term. Perhaps the adjective would be one appropriate way of the creator knowing itself, for in each interaction, no matter what the distortion, the creator is experiencing itself. The bisexual knowing of the creator by itself is the potential for two advantages. Firstly, in the green ray activated being there is the potential for a direct and simple analogue of what you may call joy, the spiritual or metaphysical nature which exists in intelligent energy. This is a great aid to comprehension of the truer nature of beingness. The other potential advantage of bisexual reproductive acts is the possibility of a sacramental understanding or connection, shall we say, with the gateway to intelligent infinity, for with appropriate preparation, work in what you may call magic may be done and experiences of intelligent infinity may be had. The positively oriented individuals concentrating upon this method of reaching intelligent infinity, then, through the seeking or the act of will, are able to direct this infinite intelligence to the work these entities desire to do, whether it be knowledge of service or ability to heal or whatever service to others is desired. These are two advantages of this particular method of the Creator experiencing itself. As we have said before, the corollary of the strength of this particular energy transfer is that it opens the door, shall we say, to the individual mind-body-spirit complex's desire to serve in an infinite number of ways another self, thus polarizing towards positive. Questioner, can you expand somewhat on the concept that this action not only allows the creator to know itself better but also creates, in our density, an offspring or makes available the pathway for another entity to enter the density? I am raw. As we have previously said, the sexual energy transfers include the red ray transfer which is random and which is a function of the second density attempt to grow, to survive, shall we say. This is a proper function of the sexual interaction. The offspring, as you call the incarnated entity which takes on the mind-body complex opportunity offered by this random act or event called the fertilization of egg by seed, causes an entity to have the opportunity to then enter this density as an incarnate entity. This gives the two who are engaged in this bisexual reproductive energy transfer the potential for great service in this area of the nurturing of the small experienced entity as it gains in experience. It shall be of interest at this point to note that there is always the possibility of using these opportunities to polarize towards the negative and this has been aided by the gradual building up over many thousands of your years of social complex distortions which create a tendency towards confusion, shall we say, or baffling of the service to others aspect of this energy transfer and subsequent opportunities for service to other selves. Questioner, if a sexual energy transfer occurs in green ray and I am assuming in this case that there is no red ray energy transfer does this mean it is impossible then for this particular transfer to include fertilization and the birthing of an entity? I am raw. This is incorrect. There is always the red ray energy transfer due to the nature of the body complex. The random result of this energy transfer will be as it will be, as a function of the possibility of fertilization at a given time in a given pairing of entities. The green ray energy transfer occurs occurs due to the vibratory rate of each entity being undistorted in any vital sense by the yellow or orange ray energies.
thus the gift, shall we say, being given freely, no payment being requested either of the body, of the mind, or of the spirit. The green ray is one of complete universality of love. This is a giving without expectation of return. Questioner, I was wondering if there was some principle behind the fact that a sexual union does not necessarily lead to fertilization. I'm not interested in the chemical or physical principles of it. I'm interested in whether or not there is some metaphysical principle that leads to the couple having a child or not, or is it purely random? I am raw. This is random within certain limits. If an entity has reached the seniority whereby it chooses the basic structure of the life experience, this entity may then choose to incarnate in a physical complex which is not capable of reproduction. Thus we find some entities which have chosen to be unfertile. Other entities, through free will, make use of various devices to ensure non-fertility. Except for these conditions, the condition is random. Questioner, thank you. In the material earlier you mentioned magnetic attraction. Could you define and expand upon the term? I am raw. We use the term to indicate that in your bisexual natures there is that which is a polarity. This polarity may be seen to be variable according to the, shall we say, male-female polarization of each entity, be each entity biologically male or female. Thus you may see the magnetism when two entities with the appropriate balance, male-female versus female-male polarity, meeting and thus feeling the attraction which polarized forces will exert, one upon the other. This is the strength of the bisexual mechanism. It does not take an act of will to decide to feel attraction for one who is oppositely polarized sexually. It will occur in an inevitable sense giving the free flow of energy a proper, shall we say, avenue. This avenue may be blocked by some distortion towards a belief condition which states to the entity that this attraction is not desired. However, the basic mechanism functions as simply as would, shall we say, the magnet and the iron. Questioner, we have what seems to be an increasing number of entities incarnate here now who have what is called a homosexual orientation in this respect. Could you explain and expand upon that concept? I am raw. Entities of this condition experience a great deal of distortion due to the fact that they have experienced many incarnations as biological male and as biological female. This would not suggest what you call homosexuality in an active phase were it not for the difficult vibratory condition of your planetary sphere. There is what you may call great aura infringement among your crowded urban areas in your more populous countries, as you call portions of your planetary surface. Under these conditions the confusions will occur. Questioner, why does density of population create these confusions? I am raw. The bisexual reproductive urge has as its goal, not only the simple reproductive function, but more especially the desire to serve others being awakened by this activity. In an overcrowded situation where each mind-body-spirit complex is under a constant bombardment from other selves it is understandable that those who are especially sensitive would not feel the desire to be of service to other selves. This also would increase the probability of a lack of desire or a blockage of the red ray reproductive energy. In an uncrowded atmosphere this same entity would, through the stimulus of feeling the solitude about it, then have much more desire to seek out someone to whom it may be of service thus regularizing the sexual reproductive function. Questioner, roughly how many previous incarnations, shall we say, would a male entity in this incarnation have had to have had in the past as a female to have a highly homosexual orientation in this incarnation? Just roughly. I am raw. If an entity has had roughly 65% of its incarnations in the sexual biological body complex, the opposite polarity to its present body complex. This entity is vulnerable to the aura infringement of your urban areas and may perhaps become of what you call an homosexual nature. It is to be noted at this juncture that although it is much more difficult, it is possible in this type of association for an entity to be of great service to another in fidelity and sincere green ray love of a non-sexual nature thus adjusting or lessening the distortions of its sexual impairment. Questioner, Timothy Leary, doing research, wrote that at the time of puberty, and up through that time, there is an imprint occurring on the DNA coding of an entity in that, for instance, sexual biases are imprinted due to early sexual experiences or some of the first sexual experiences of the entity. Does anything like this actually happen? I am raw. This is partially correct. Due to the nature of solitary sexual experiences, it is in most cases unlikely that what you call masturbation has an imprinting effect upon later experiences. This is similarly true with some of the encounters which might be seen as homosexual among those of this age group. These are often, instead, 
innocent exercises in curiosity. However, it is quite accurate that the first experience in which the mind-body-spirit complex is intensely involved will indeed imprint upon the entity for that life experience a set of preferences. Questioner, does the Orion group use this, shall we say, as a gateway to impressing upon entities, shall we say, preferences which could create negative polarization? I am raw. Just as we of the Confederation attempt to beam our love and light whenever given the opportunity, including sexual opportunities, so the Orion group will use an opportunity if it is negatively oriented or if the individual is negatively oriented. Questioner, is there any emotional bias that has nothing to do with male-female sexual polarity that can create sexual energy buildup in an entity? I am raw. The sexual energy buildup is extremely unlikely to occur without sexual bias upon the part of the entity. Perhaps we did not understand your question but it seems obvious that it would take an entity with the potential for sexual activity to experience a sexual energy build-up. Questioner, I was thinking more of the possibility of the Orion group having influenced, say, certain members of the Third Reich who I have read reports of having sexual gratification from the observation of the, in some cases, the gassing and killing of entities in the gas chambers. I am raw. We shall repeat these entities have the potential for sexual energy build up. The choice of stimulus is certainly the choice of the entity. In the case of which you speak, these entities were strongly polarized orange ray, thus finding the energy blockage of power over others, but putting to death being the ultimate power over others. This then being expressed in a sexual manner, though solitary. In this case the desire would continue unabated and be virtually unquenchable. You will find, if you observe the entire spectrum of sexual practices among your peoples, that there are those who experience such gratification from domination over others either from rape or from other means of domination. In each case this is an example of energy blockage which is sexual in its nature. Questioner, would the Orion group, then, be able, shall we say, to impress on entities this orange ray effect, or did they? Is this the way that this came about, is what I'm trying to get at? Is this the way these concepts came about on this planet? Because if we go back to the beginning of third density, there must be a primal cause of this. I am raw. The cause of this is not Orion. It is the free choice of your peoples. This is somewhat difficult to explain. We shall attempt. The sexual energy transfers and blockages are more a manifestation or example of that which is more fundamental than the other way about. Therefore, as your peoples became open to the concepts of bellicosity and the greed of ownership, these various distortions then began to filter down through the tree of mind into body complex expressions, the sexual expression being basic to that complex. Thus these sexual energy blockages, though Orion influenced and intensified, are basically the product of the beingness chosen freely by your peoples. This will be the final question unless we may speak further upon this question to clarify, or answer any short queries before we close. Questioner, I just need to know if this then works through the racial memory to infect the entire population in some way. Does that sort of thing happen? I am raw. The racial memory contains all that has been experienced. Thus there is some, shall we say, contamination even of the sexual. This showing mostly in your own culture is the various predispositions to adversary relationships, or, as you call them, marriages, rather than the free giving one to another in the love and the light of the infinite creator. Questioner, that was precisely the point which I was trying to make. Thank you very much. Not to tire the instrument, I will just ask, then, if there is anything we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or to improve the contact. I am raw. Please be aware that this instrument is somewhat fatigued. The channel is very clear. However, we find the vital energy low. We do not wish to deplete the instrument. However, there is a shall we say, energy exchange which we feel an honor duty to offer when this instrument opens itself. Therefore, counsel we this instrument to attempt to assess the vital energies carefully before offering itself as open channel. All is well. You are conscientious. I am raw. I leave this instrument and you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, then, rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one creator. Adonai. And Obsession 31.